when we are going to look at some uh, video that I've recorded uh, a very long time ago. This is a regression bug reported to me by QA, so it crashes in release 6.4 but worked in previous releases. So we are trying to reproduce this uh, bug that I've shown on the title and the first thing we are doing here is we are using the RR debugger to uh, record the uh, bug and in order to reproduce it we are going to have to load this uh, document and then perform some um, copy and paste operations. So first the whole document is selected, then it is copied to the clipboard and then we create a new document and paste the clipboard into that and so far things are working fine. And now it is pasted and we click the undo button and things uh, crash now as expected from the bug description. And so now that we have recorded the crash we try to get the office out of the way and start debugging by using the rr replay command. This uh, starts a GDB session and now we Here can start by first turning on the uh, logging morning, QA everybody. text sorry, file in GDB, which is a very useful feature. Then we first set a breakpoint on the constructor of the undo object in writer, because the crash is an undo, and we set a breakpoint command to uh, print a short backtrace and just automatically continue when the breakpoint is hit, which should give us a quick overview as to which uh, undo objects are being created here. And now we um, open the uh, log file that's written by GDB in a text editor for more convenient uh, history. And now we just wait for the uh, replay <coughs> until it gets to some interesting place. And um, the place where it will stop basically is when the crash happens because we have set the only breakpoint to automatically continue. And this takes a while, so I've cut the video a bit here. And now we can see that. And this takes a while, so I've cut the video a bit here. And now we can see that our breakpoint is being hit and the stack traces are being printed. While execution continues. We take a quick peek at these stack traces, but first we need to find the start of them. You can see that the undo object that's being created is an SW undo um, page desk create. There's also SW undo char format create. So some styles are being created apparently. Okay, now we have stopped where the crash happens. And it has crashed while doing an invalid access to an element of the nodes array. So this nodes array is a central data structure in Writer. It contains um, all of the uh, paragraphs, which are SW text nodes, as elements and it also contains structural nodes like start and end nodes and these encode a tree structure into the array. So now we look where the crash is happening in the undo code and we set a breakpoint there and uh, not for any particular reason we uh, just reverse continue to the start of this statement where we set the breakpoint and as it happens the first time we reverse continue um, 
we stop at the same place where we were before because we switched directions so we have to do it twice so now this is the SWUndo inserts um, class which is responsible for um, inserted or pasted content such as from the clipboard and now we take a look at the documents nodes array since this is a very large document we see that uh, the nodes array is actually truncated after um, this last element here and in order to see the complete nodes array we first tell GDB that we want to print 10,000 elements and now it is able to print all of them and of course it's not very convenient to look at all of this uh, this um, debug output in the uh, terminal so that's what the log file and the text editor is for but what we can see is that the last valid node has the index 2353 and this is the end node of the body content of the document an invalid index in undo usually indicates that something has gone wrong previously for example there could be multiple undo actions and the previous undo actions did not restore the document model to the same situation that the undo action that crashes expects as we can see in the source code the crash happens right at the start of the uh, undo impl function where the uh, position that is stored in the undo object is restored into a swpam that is basically a cursor it has a start and an end position in the document model now we look for the swundo inserts in the debugger log and we can see that it has been created right at the start it is the very first undo object that is being created we can see on the stack that is uh, basically the paste operation from the clipboard calling the uh, document models uh, copy function so now we look at the uh, undo action and see that there is this base class SW undo range which has stored the position start and end position where the content has been inserted each position consists of a node index that is an index into the nodes array and a content index that is the index inside of a text node so now we are going to set a watch point on the end index that is stored in the undo action and this is going to stop whenever this the value of this variable changes and setting a watch point use the minus l flag and check the gdb prints hardware watch point because if it prints software watch point you will be very unhappy now we reverse continue again and we stop at SW inserts set insert range which has changed the value of the end index and as we can see it is called from the copy impl impl function that has also created the SW undo inserts object So this function takes an SWPAM parameter and copies its values into the undo action. So now we look at what the calling function copy impl impl is doing. And it looks like we are basically at the end of this function or close to it. There is 
a lot of code being run before we get to this point. Now we have reached the start of the function. Now we look at the source code of the SW undo inserts class in the text editor. We see that the constructor also takes an SW pump, but the positions passed there are ignored, says the comment. Here in the set insert range function, the positions are copied from the SW palm that is passed and stored in the member variables. And that's the first half of the function. And the second half is that it, it looks for flies, that is to say, floating objects that are anchored on particular paragraphs and creates undo actions for those flies, presumably because they have been inserted. So when one of these flies is being inserted, it may insert additional nodes into the nodes array, so it could be interesting to know if we actually have created some of these uh, corresponding undo objects and it turns out we do find one in the debugger log. Although, if we look closely, the caller of this undo object is not the set insert range function that we are interested in, but copy layout format. Now we take a closer look at the copy impl impl function. We can see that it takes parameters such as a PUM for the source range that is being copied and a position, which is the insert position in the target. Now if we search for the set insert range function, We see that it is being called very close to the end of the function. At the bottom of the window, you see the function ends. And here the undo action is created. And this is SW undo copy document, that is a subclass of SW undo inserts. This is very close to the start of the function. Now we take a look at the nodes array as it is when the set insert range function is called. Now we go and look at the debugger output and uh, check what is the index of the last node in the document. Here in the middle we have the uh, situation where it crashed and uh, at the bottom is the current situation and we see that the indexes indeed differ by 15. So somehow 15 nodes that used to be there are no longer there at the time when it crashes.
So now, since the nodes are no longer there, they must have been deleted somehow. So we set a breakpoint in the SW node destructor and continue forward again. So we stopped in the destructor. Where are we? So apparently uh, we are in the undo of a SW in undo inlay format. That is a fly that has been inserted, and the undo of course deletes it again. We already know that we have constructed um, undo actions of this kind. So here is this code in the setInsert range function that would create such undo actions. And it first checks that the um, anchor position is in a certain range, the range that has been inserted by the SW inserts action. Now we look at the um, undo in slave format object and this undo action also stores positions. In particular it stores here the um, node and content index where the anchor of the fly is. Now we want to use the debugger log to check um, these positions. We find that the start node of the SW undo inserts is 397, whereas the anchor of this fly in the undo action is 333, so it is outside of the range of the SW undo inserts and it's um, therefore not in the body content because the entire body was basically inserted there and it's also then not created by this set insert range function that we looked at before So now the question is of course where does this SW Indo in slave format object get created? We see there are also copy functions here on the stack. And here the interesting one is this copy page desk header footer impl. So apparently what is going on there is that a, a page style which is called page descriptor in writer internally is being copied and inside of that um, or inside of the footer of that page style there is some fly anchored and yeah that's why it's being inserted here, why we have this under action. So now we set a breakpoint where this SW under in slave format is constructed and then reverse continue. OK, 
Okay, now we stopped in set insert range. That means that the undo for the uh, fly was created before we got to that point. So now we stop at our first breakpoint, but we are not interested in any undo action, so disable that and stop again at the specific fly undo action. So what we can see now in the backtrace is that the reason why the footer and therefore the page descriptor is being copied is that swtextNodeMakeCopy is called and uh, so apparently what happens is that in the body text there is a paragraph that has an attribute that sets a specific page style so the page style has to exist in the target document, and that's why it's copied. So now we look at the um, range that's being passed there. It is exactly the same as in our SWUndo inserts object. So we're copying all of the nodes in that range, which isn't ultimately that surprising. So as we said, there's a text node in the body that refers to a page style. The page style is being copied and uh, because there is a fly anchored in the footer of the page style, this SW in slave format object is created. Then during undo, the SW in slave format is invoked before the SW undo inserts. Now the question is, when do the positions that are stored in the SW undo inserts object get recorded? And I should mention, inserting a fly inserts nodes into the nodes array before the body text. And we can just continue and we arrive in the set insert range function that records these positions. So these positions are recorded after the SW in slave format object is created and therefore after the additional flies are inserted in the document which has inserted additional nodes in the nodes array before the body text and the positions for the um, SW inserts range are recorded after these additional flies have been inserted, so they are shifted by the number of fly nodes that have been inserted. So in other words, the problem is that the uh, order in which the positions have been stored into the undo actions uh, is the same when the actions were originally performed as when the undo actions are invoked and uh, this doesn't work. The order has to be the inverse when the undo is invoked as it was originally. That is the reason why in the end the uh, node index was off by 15. That is presumably the number of fly nodes that have been inserted. Okay, it's time to ponder the source code of copy impulse imp imp some more. So we can see this is the place where the function call happens that ends up copying the page style. And if we scroll down a bit, we eventually get to the point where z and z range is called. And really the situation is that at the start of the function the SW undo inserts object is created. Then in the middle of it the uh, nested function is called that copies all of the nodes and also copies the page style. And at the end of the uh, copy infill impl function the um, positions are stored inside of the SW undo inserts object. So 
since QA claimed that this bug is a regression. How did this ever work before? And in order to answer this question, we take a look at the git history of the uh, functions that we have been looking at so far. So in this um, oldest version in the history we find that um, the situation is pretty much the same. So first the, the under object is created and at the end of the function since insert range is called but now we notice that uh, this source file is actually um, relatively new and was the result of moving a lot of code out of other files so we are not actually looking at the complete history of this code yet So now we try to find the original source file. And then we look at the history of that file. see that in the very oldest version from the year 2000 the situation is already quite similar. Well, the function was called a different name but what it does is quite similar. First it creates the undo object and then at the end it calls the set insert range function. So this code has been unchanged, so we still don't have an answer for why this would be a regression now. It would be interesting to know what introduced this bug, because then um, a fix might be more obvious. One idea to fix it might be to um, change the order in which the undo objects are appended to the uh, undo stack by um, inserting the SW undo inserts objects later than the call when the um, styles are being copied. Of course, it's not obvious whether this would actually work. So possibly there was a more subtle change between uh, the previous version where this didn't crash and now, such as um, maybe there were flies not being copied, there are copied now, or actually we have so far uh, concentrated on the flies, but it uh, could also be possible that the page style wasn't copied previously because the footer itself contains nodes that are inserted before the body content in the nodes array so 
um, the footer itself could create the same problem and we have seen that an undo object for the page style has also been created at some point in time. So now we will have a look at the implementation of this SW Hanno page desk create. And what it will do in Hanno is simply call the del page desk function of the document. What does this function do? Um, not a whole lot. Mainly it calls this other function. And there is really nothing interesting going on here. We saw the undo page desk create invoke the assignment operator of the page desk. So the members of the page style that are relevant here are these m master, m left, m first master, m first left. Those are all item sets, and they contain uh, they they own basically the headers and footers in the nodes array. So probably what's happening there is that the SW undo page desk create um, contains a copy of the um, page desk object and that will keep the header and footer alive for the time being. So these nodes maybe aren't actually deleted. So a quick recap. We have found the, the cause of the crash in a single GDB session and we have seen that um, setting a watch point on a variable and then using rr's reverse continue command will uh, stop at the place where the variable got its current value which is very useful. Now we are going to reproduce uh, the problem with an older version so that we can uh, check what is going on uh, differently there. And as we can see it does not crash on undo. Once the recording is finished we start our, our replay again in a second terminal so we can compare side by side. And again we start by setting a breakpoint on the SWUNU constructor. And soon we hit an annoying problem, which is that we forgot to disable the uh, Java virtual machine in the configuration. And uh, so we get a spurious sec fault on startup, which uh, doesn't really matter, does not indicate a problem, so we just continue. Now we stop at the first undo action and it is the SW undo inserts that we are already familiar with. And the second one is a paragraph style being created. And the third one is the page style being copied. 
So now we know that this also happens in this older version. And the next one is also a paragraph style. And we have another paragraph style. And another one. And that's yet another one. Now it got a bit repetitive, so I cut a bunch of these out of the video. Here we can see a numbering rule that is list style being created. But here it gets interesting. Now we have an SW under delay format, um, but this is actually, um, if you close out that, at the stack, this undo object is created during undo of another undo object, particularly the SW undo inserts. And uh, this is something that can happen in Writer, that one undo action during undo creates another undo action. But this one will not go on the uh, undo stack, it is handled eternally by the outer undo action. But we get to the point where the undo is being invoked, and so we now know that no SW undo inslay format was created in this older version, which is a difference from the version that crashes. So now we are going back to the crashing version. And we are going to look why there are flies being inserted here that create these unknown actions. And it's possible that there was some change between these two versions in how flies are being selected for insertion, for copying. In fact, we know that there was a change between these two versions, so the question is whether this could be the cause of this crash. So here we see some code that checks, calls a function to check whether flies are being selected. And we see that in the source document there were 69 flies. And the A set contains the flies that have been selected for copying in this function call. And this is one of them. And this is the anchor of the fly that has been selected. We can see here that the type of the anchor is at paragraph, fly at para. So now we try to check why the fly has been selected. So this is the place where it gets inserted into the set. And it gets inserted because here this function returned true. So we reverse continue to that point and step into this function.
Now we can see just from looking at the uh, arguments of the function that the node index of the anchor position is larger than the node index of the start position and smaller than the node index of the end position. So um, our experience tells us that even in the older version, if this um, fly had been checked, it would have been copied as well in this situation. So now we are going to check in the source code of the older version that this is actually the case. And we find the place in the code where it inserts the fly that has been selected for copying. And here we see that the code that checks whether to copy or not actually looks quite different here. So there is no function call. So we go back to our GDB session for the old version and set a breakpoint in this copy fly, in fly impl function and see where it's being called. And we see that in the new version it was called here in this copy page desk function. And in the old version, the caller is a different function. There is nothing related to page desks on the stack here. And here it's the same. No page desk on the stack. And again, no page desk. So is this copy page desk header footer impl function actually called in the old version? And we finally set a breakpoint to check that question.
Now we just set a breakpoint in the constructor of the SW doc just so that we don't reverse continue too far otherwise we might go back to the start of the main function which would just waste our time now we do stop in this uh, copy uh, page desk function but we just printed the backtrace of the uh, copy fly and fly info function and it was not called by this copy page desk function and now we notice an unfortunate problem we have uh, not built this old version with debug info so uh, we cannot look at the uh, source code in the debugger and this makes it a bit hard to find out why this function does not call copy fly and fly info so what we are going to do about this is we are going to record the bug another time with an even older version for which we do have debug info And as expected, the 6.1 version does not crash on undo either. Now we replay the execution with the 6.1 version and we set a breakpoint on the function that interests us, the copy page disk header for temple. And we set another breakpoint on the constructor of sw undo inserts. And now we hit the copy page desk breakpoint, but it turns out that this is not interesting because we are still importing the original file, so we just disable the breakpoint for now and will re-enable it later once we get to the other breakpoint. And thanks to the magic of video editing, we are already there and will enable the breakpoint now and set some additional breakpoints on the uh, constructor of the SW in slave format class where the files are being copied and also on the function that is invoked during undo for SW undo inserts which is beyond the point where interesting things would have happened. So we see that this copy page desk function is being called but uh, right now we are just interested in whether the flies are being copied at all and we do not hit that breakpoint no, we have reached undo so no flies were being copied because no undo objects for these have been created so now we uh, reverse continue and then we just look what the call stack looked like in the new version how are these SW in slave formats being created and the page disk header for the impl function calls this uh, copy fly in fly impl function so um, w when we reach this function in GDB we step into it and where did we, re we return on this line so the um, function returns because this attribute isn't set which means that the page style does not have a header or footer And 
if we uh, reverse continue to the other invocation, remember there were two invocations of, of, of this function, we see that this one also returns here. So um, this is for one page style. First it tries to copy the header and try then it tries to copy the footer and for this page style both the header and the footer are not set. So now we are getting a new idea about uh, why this is supposedly a regression in the 6.4 version. Um, we know that the code in writer didn't actually change but uh, it's possible that the import filter for docx files has changed in some way so that previously it did not import this footer and now it does import the footer. So now we want to check this theory by just uh, trying it out in the 6.3 version what the document looks like after it's been imported and first we want to check the page styles that contain the footers and unfortunately it turns out there is a abundance of imported page styles so this would take a while to check. So if we scroll through the document as a poor man's check, we don't see footers. In the navigator we can see um, the text frames. There are several of these and the ones with the gray text are somehow um, not visible. If they were visible they would have solid black text. So not sure where those frames would be. So while scrolling there are no footers visible anywhere. So much for the 6.3 version. Now we try with the current version. So we can see that there are lots of frames in this document and they have black text so they actually exist and uh, whenever we click on the ones that have names we end up seeing a footer with a page number in it. So we have found the explanation why it uh, crashes now when it didn't crash before. The uh, docx import filter was improved so it can import this footer now and then it crashes in Ando. And with one final look in GDB we can see that in the 6.1 version we had only um, 64 flies in the source document while the current version has five more. And that was all for today. Thanks for your attention. And video is installed, uh, finish, Michel, so. Oh, yes, um, the video should be finished now. Looks like the last 10 seconds or so were cut off, but uh, nothing interesting there.
So I haven't seen any questions so far. I guess if there are no questions, then we can just um, mm -hmm. end here. I don't know. So I will ch checking the chat. Mm, maybe nothing. Please, so uh, if you have questions, so please type in or chat or uh, Chichi. <laughs> Hmm. So. Okay. Ah. Uh, no comment. One comment. On the chat, that's a lot to uh, digress. <laughs> uh, yes, I guess you can't understand everything uh, at the first time. Yes. Yeah. And so it's the original video. Bible for download somewhere? Uh, not yet, but I hope that it will be um, uploaded to YouTube by mm. the organizers. Maybe so. Uh, I think uh, organized teams so will upload to the YouTube or other site. Mm-hmm.